continuation of the body fluids and circulation. Are there questions, sir? Okay, you have to continue. Mm -hmm. Starts. They have come already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you have to continue the uh, body fluids and circulation. Uh, last class, if you remember, we saw the structure of the musculature of the heart. Today, what we are going to do, uh, the major arteries and the uh, circulation, the blood flowing through the heart, that's the cardiac cycle. Then recording of the cardiac cycle. If time permits, we'll see the population and the blood group. So before, uh, when the circulation comes, you should know what is pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. And that is one place, after we finish this uh, circulation in the human body, we compare this with the incomplete circulation and double circulation. Because questions, neat questions are invariably oriented in a single circulation and double circulation. And diagrammatic structures are there um, to show just a, a diagrammatic sketch to represent uh, what you mean by this, uh, show the pulmonary circulation and the uh, system is first we study the uh, structure of the heart and how does it go about it, okay? Now, the last class we finished the structure of the heart, if you remember, musculature of the heart. Now, you know very well. So atrial wall much thicker, thinner than the ventricular wall and the ventricular wall is much thicker and it is folded inside. This is the inner surface of the ventricle, papillary muscle. Now that is continuously the outer musculature. This is the structure of your muscular structure of the heart, human heart. And uh, these are the valves are there. Because this is, you know very well, this is uh, left atrium, right atrium, left atrium, and uh, right ventricle and left ventricle. Now the left side always carries a pure blood oxygenated blood. In a simpler language, you, uh, you can take it as a pure blood or oxygenated blood. On the left side, you have got deoxygenated or impure blood for locally. Now, if you take the right side part, the left side of your heart carries always the uh, pure blood or oxygenated blood. So the left side always we denote as the red area. Now the whole blood comes down. So the whole interior is filled with the uh, uh, oxygenated blood. And this is the left now you have in between now the valves or the white structures that I'm showing are the valves hanging on the uh, right, left side you have got bicuspid valve and on the left uh, right side you have got the tricuspid valve now these valves are shown in the figure like these two flops because you know very well labeling of the structure of the heart is necessary they label all the parts and the parts you should know. The in, uh, atrial walls are thinner than the ventricular wall. These elevations are called, or these are called papillary muscles. And the valves are connected to the papillary. Left side of the heart, you have the left side, you know, whether there is a, 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 a deoxygenated blood or impure blood. So this is. Now, the flow of blood, which is from the right atrium to the right ventricle and left atrium to the left ventricle. Now, what are the major blood vessels which you have to see? From the right atrium, this is deoxygenated blood. From the upper, uh, that is head and neck. Head and neck, shoulder. Upper part of the body is called head, neck and shoulder, arms. See, this is the upper part of the body and the biggest vein comes from the upper part of the bo uh, part of your body. That is the uh, superior vena cava. It opens into the right atrium. Similarly, from the lower part of your body, and the thick blood vessel comes out, that is the uh, inferior vena cava. Now, the, the opening of these valves, now the opening of these tubes are guarded by semilunar valve. This is a tube and that's a blood which is inside. Now, semilunar valves are here. So, this is the inferior vena cava bringing the inferior blood. Now, the left atrium side simultaneously, left side of your upper chamber, left side of the heart, or left atrium disease, pulmonary vein. 
the pulmonary veins come from they bring in pure pure blood or the uh, oxygenated from the lungs now this is pulmonary vein there are four pulmonary veins diagrammatically we are showing left atrium on the uh, flat figure the three dimensional figure is an actual body the left atrium will be totally the whole heart will be tilted the heart is tilted anterior posteriorly that is front and back slightly so that the whole left atrium and the real heart you cannot see back and front like that way it will be at the back of the heart if you see the heart model you can see that so from the the left atrium so this whole thing is the inferior vena cava receiving the flow of the body this superior vena cava bringing the deoxygenated from the upper part of the body now the uh, uh, these are veins veins bring the blood towards the heart it is flowing towards the heart at the same time arteries this is also the vein the vein will bring the blood towards the heart uh, brings the blood towards the heart now the arteries lead heart so from the right side the greater the biggest artery and the left side there are two big arteries left side actually the artery will carry impure or deoxygenated blood on the right side the artery will carry oxygenated blood so these arteries are so thick and the big so they are known as known as arch also on the left the right side the blood vessel or the artery which leaves the right ventricle is called pulmonary arch or pulmonary artery now on the right side the uh, the blood vessel which carries the pure blood is called aortic blood uh, aorta simply or aortic arch why they are called as an arch because they get a bend they are not straight through like this so if you take the aortic arch now if you have to draw the aortic arch it starts from the right ventricle it takes up goes up and take a nice turn now this turn is a characteristic of the aortic arch is called arch of aorta now this whole thing you have got the blood flowing from the left ventricle going out of the heart arteries carry blood blood outside the heart so this is the flowing now and it goes behind the heart and comes down the flow comes behind the heart and comes down like this takes a turn now this is called the arch on the arch there are three blood vessels now characteristically one two and the three now these are the major branches on the See, these are the major blood vessels, aorta. This is called aortic arch, and the, uh, this is on the left side. This is on the right side. Okay. Now, this blood vessel. So, the the blood vessel which carries at the, the opening. Now, this blood vessel has got now the aorta. This is the aorta. It takes an arch. Now, aorta carries the biggest blood vessel. It is so thick. You can put three of your fingers inside. You can fold three fingers together and insert into it. The thick tube. It, actually, it is a bit narrow here. It is broader than this. And the end, you have got the valve back again. That's called semilunar valve. Now, these blood vessels. One, the big one on the left side, right, uh, on the right side, and these two are on the left side. On the left side. Hmm. Now, this one is. and the right side common blood vessel what will happen the right side blood vessel on the right side blood vessel divides into two, two branches one goes into the head and neck through the neck into the brain and the one goes to the right arm this is to the right arm now as it goes to the right arm it produces a branch which is back again it will enter into the neck via the neck so there's a common branch it goes up one to the right limb right upper arm another one is to the Uh, right side of your uh, head and neck through the neck you go into the brain now here this is the the left one goes the left side of your neck and divides into two and enters into the brain again this will divide into two enters into the brain now this one is left arm uh, is completely for the left arm this is completely for the left arm and it gives a branch which back again through the it goes to the brain see the arch of aorta has got three major branches one completely to the right side now two are towards the left side now the two towards the left side this is called left subclavian left subclavian or left arm vein now this is left arm vein this is called left common carotid which will go through the through the valley of the neck into the brain that is internal carotid and external carotid on the Uh, right side yeah what this is called right subclavian to the right arm 
and this is the right common carotid that will go and divide into two. So three major branches are from the arch of aorta. Now which are the three major branches from the arch of aorta? Now one is the this one is the uh, to the left arm, left arm. So it's called left subclavian. Now this is called vertebral artery. Vertebral artery. It will go. Why is it called vertebral artery? There are holes in the transverse process of cervical vertebrae. If you study the skeletal system, cervical vertebrae has got so transverse process of cervical vertebrae as a small hole. Because the vertebrae are arranged one on top of the other, the hole forms a thin narrow tube through which the blood vessel will enter and enters into the skull, supplying the brain proper. Now, this one, the second one is called left common carotid. Left common carotid. Common carotid. So, on the, on the left side, left subclavian, left common carotid. Well, the left common carotid artery will supply the interior. Along the neck, it will go into the interior or through the skull, then this is the brain proper. The carotid artery is divided into internal and external carotid. One is going inside, one is supplying the outer part of the head and neck. Now, this, this is on the um, right side of it. This is the right subclavian. This is called right brachiocephalic. That is, this one is common for arm and head and neck. So, brachio means arm, wings, cephalic head. So, this is called common brachio, a common brachiocephalic. That divides into for right, uh, right arm, that right subclavian. And then the right common carotid. Right common carotid. So the three branches you should know. That means, the, the, what's the importance of this? The left arm of your body gets a separate blood supply. But in the case of the uh, right arm, the common branch, that divides into arm and the interior. But on the le uh, left side of your body, uh, separate blood vessel to the interior of the brain and separate blood vessel for your arm. These are the three major branches on the arch of iota. Okay. Now, if you have to label this, now these are the pulmonary artery, pulmonary, pulmonary, pulmonary vein, pulmonary veins. There are two pairs of pulmonary veins and left atrium is totally behind the heart, posterior side of the heart and uh, the only two pairs, one pair I am showing, the other pair, sometimes they show by the side, it will be too crowded. All the pore is not opening on the side. You should not have that idea. If the chamber is here, two from the left, uh, left lung, two from the right lung. They are opposite in their orientation. Then the next one, uh, the artery which leaves the left ventricle, the greatest vessel, that is the iota. In the book, it will be given aortic arch. Aortic arch or iota. And there is a valve. This is called semilunar valve. Semilunar valve. Semilunar valve. Why is it called semilunar valve? They are small cup-like structures. Small cup-like structures. There will be three valves are facing like this way. Now imagine this is one valve and here is another valve. Here is another valve. And the blood has to push through the gap like this. Way. So these valves have got a cup facing inside the tube. And the convex surface is facing outside. That's why you draw the semilunar valve like this. If you draw the blood vessel, draw because the cup side is facing inside the tube and the convex side is facing outside. Now, what is the idea? When the blood enters in, suppose the blood is reverting back, it's going back, it will first fill up the cup. It will not easily come out of the tube. It, uh, the whole cavity should be filled up and then only it can stretch. So, the cup facing inward prevents the backward flow of the blood to some extent. That is the, that is the character of all the semilunar valves. The semilunar valves are present in the endosuperior vena cava, inferior vena cava, pulmonary artery, and we have to see the uh, aortic arch or iota. And then on the right side, you have to take the biggest blood vessel. You know very well that's the pulmonary artery which goes to the lung. The pulmonary artery, how it goes to the lungs? So it starts from the right ventricle, the base right ventricle here. It starts and goes behind the arch, behind and below the arch. And below the arch, it divides into two. This is the pulmonary arch. Pulmonary artery. Sometimes it is also known as pulmonary arch. So, you need not bother about the structures which are being uh, overlapped by this. 
and it divides into two, one going to the left lung and the right leg. It goes out behind it. So the pulmonary artery arises from the right ventricle and it has the valve, semilunar valve. It goes behind the arch of iota, the iota and goes up, divides below the arch into two, going to the two sides of your uh, two left lung and right leg. So these are the major blood vessels associated to the heart. Apart from that, the base of the iota, there is a small blood vessel. The diagrammatically, I have shown the face uh, base is like this way. But if you take in reality, if the, um, uh, the heart structure ventricle is like this, where the aortic arch comes out like this, now there will be a small bulb. Now this is aortic uh, uh, sinus at the end of the aorta. From here, a blood vessel will arise. Now that will supply, say this is the heart. Now there's a base of the iota. There will be small expanded part. From the expanded part, a blood vessel arises. So it goes, see this is an entire heart which I'm showing. One second. Suppose you have the, you show the heart. Right? Uh, if, uh, suppose we show like this way, you have the uh, iota outside, um, uh, atria, ventricle, and you can see the blood vessels out, you will find the thick blood vessel in a textbook like this way, and uh, the, uh, here, this is the aortic arch, and the, another blood vessel from here, that is which goes below, that's a pulmonary, that's a pulmonary, okay. Now, from the base of the aortic arch, a blood vessel arises, it goes on the surface horizontally, rotate or moves behind the heart, and one branch will go, come round, that's called circumference, and other one will produce a long, one branch down. Now, on the heart, if you see, you can see nicely a blood vessel coming down, showing the difference between the two ventricles. Now, this is one ventricle, this is a left ventricle, right ventricle. From outside itself, we can make out this is a right chamber, it's a left chamber. By the long, this is called long eternal. Yeah. This blood vessel is called coronary artery. Coronary artery. Coronary artery is the artery which supplies blood to the muscle of the heart. Now, coronary heart diseases, CAD, coronary uh, diseases, CD, are uh, that uh, uh, coronary arteriosis. Now, coronary artery is the blood. Though the heart does the entire pumping of work, the muscle of the heart is supplied by a single blood vessel. The single blood vessel arises in the base of the iota. Now, since it arises in the base of the iota, now it go, it divides into two, and one branch will go behind, come round the heart. That's called circumferential branch. Another one is a longitudinal branch which will come down. So this one, this group, it, it very clearly demarcates the right ventricle and left ventricle. The circumferential branch demarcates the upper chamber and the lower chamber. Now this coronary artery is very important because you know very well arteriosclerosis, arteriosclerosis. Coronary heart diseases are called CAD, coronary artery diseases, CAD or CAT. Now these arteries... So, they are not thick arteries like the pulmonary artery or the aortic branch. They are narrow blood vessels only. Now, this single blood vessel only supplies the muscle. So, if this blood supply is not provided to the muscle of the heart, the muscle of the heart cannot uh, function properly. Then, when the heart cannot get the enough blood supply, oxygen deficit will come. That's what will be infarction. Infarction of the heart means not enough blood supply, the muscle begins to atrophy. Now, this, when the heart muscle is not supplied with the oxygen, the contraction slowly it begins. And that contraction, uh, if the blood supply is not there, oxygen deficit will produce a defect angina. And the uh, be severe chest pain. Now, the chest pain will be the chest pain, but the, relay, the, the pain will be reflexly, relatively it will spread along the right side of your arm. So, if there is a lingering pain on the right side of the arm or the neck of the arm, it shows there is angina. Angina pectoris, the defect is. Angina is a lack of oxygen to the heart muscle. That when the heart muscle degenerates, the infarction of the heart muscle. So, why, how the blood supply will decrease? The coronary artery, the girth of the coronary artery can become narrow in two ways. So, the coronary artery, suppose it is there, suppose the coronary artery is here. Mm. So, okay, now, see, this is, so the heart is supplied to the coronary artery. Coronary artery starts from the base of the iota, iotic arch. Where the iota starts from left ventricle. 
because see just like take the major blood vessels how the neat question can be co organized so it's very simple they can ask you the blood vessels which arise from the right the uh, what is the main difference between the, the blood vessels they won't ask you vein and artery directly they'll give you name the, the blood vessels to bring the blood to the heart and the blood vessels take away from the heart they will give you artery vein cap arteriole and venule now arteriole and vein are capillaries so we will next see what's the difference between the vein and artery and capillary so the blood vessels are a three category in our body you can say one is artery one is vein one is capillaries there is no separate capillary according to their structure artery wall will be thick and the musculature is thicker and so it can stand the pressure and artery is but veins wall are thinner the musculature of the wall is very thin now as usual how we are digestive system serosa muscularis mucosa same manner here also the arteries also got an outer covering serosa and the other one is the muscular muscular layer then inner one is a mucosa here also mucosa what is mucosa epithelial lining but the epithelial lining of the blood vessel we call it as an endothelium or squamous epithelium only so the endothelial these cells now the the cells which are the artery the girth of the capillaries what's the difference between the vein capillary and artery 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 capillary in the middle and capillary and vein there are three blood vessels according to the thickness of the wall we can say and according to the function arteries always carry the blood away from the heart veins always bring the blood towards the heart now capillary is a connection between the artery and vein there is no separate capillary as it is the artery carries it divides into branches and branches and branches when it enters something it will become a narrow blood vessel say diagonally suppose this is an organ now this is an artery the artery comes Now it reaches this, this artery divides before entering into the organ, and here you have got a number of cells. Now three cells I am showing. The artery divides, then it enters in. How in a lung you study trachea, bronchiole, second bronchiole, tertiary bronchiole, and bra um, uh, then uh, 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 primary bronchiole, secondary tertiary, and bronchiole. Under the bronchiole, terminal bronchiole, and the initial bronchiole. Same manner as it goes on dividing, the tube becomes narrow and narrow and narrow. and it becomes narrow in a sense and when it becomes narrow the thickness of the wall of the tube also will decrease when it is in the artery the wall is quite thick that the musculature is more and as it comes thinner and thinner and thinner the thinnest one the musculature will be on few fibers of smooth muscle and then only one layer of cell lining the tube so single layer of cell lining the tube that's all so the cell structure see outer serosa won't be there muscular is mucosa won't be there only the endothelial cell the innermost lining layer a single layer of cell lining the tube so the why is that is the importance of the tube because of the single layer of the wall anything inside the tiny tube can move out anything outside the tiny tube can come inside that's what it mean by capillary now the artery is a thick wall so when it comes inside it divides into thin branches that's a capillary And at the same time, these thin branches are flow of blood. This inward. This is an organ. Now this is the artery. Now artery divides into this is a thin blood. This thin blood vessel back again has to come out of the organ. All the thin blood vessels join up together, form a thick blood vessel. That that another blood vessel that is vein. So these thin blood vessels which ramify inside the organ, or which branches or surrounds the cell of the organ, is known as the capillary. So capillary, and this is one other way. Why am I telling you? In your option, there is a diagram in your textbook. Now they will give you the structure of artery, vein, and the capillary. Now if you take the artery, if they, there is a cut section of it. Mm. The arterial wall, thicker wall. Now uh, yeah, they will show the wall will be very thick. These differences you can see. This is a basic difference: outer serosa and the muscular layer, inner layer. If we take the vein, outer serosa, the girth, the opening will be the girth will be bigger, and this is muscular. This is outer first layer, second layer, and third layer. Now here, this is the first layer, second layer, third layer. You can make out now the inner opening is broader in the case of vein because the wall is thinner, and the veins always carry the blood towards the heart, and the um, uh, artery always carries the blood away from the blood heart. So the artery, when the heart blood comes out of the heart, it is pumped out. So automatically, the blood which is coming into the artery is coming with the force, and the wall, thick wall of the artery, is able to stand the pressure coming of the blood which is pumping into it. So the thick wall provides 
the uh, resistance or the strength to bear the pressure which is coming inside. Now, in the case of vein, it is draining. In the vein is the blood flow is very passive. Now, passive in a sense, the blood is draining everything into the heart. So, the flow will be smooth and passive. There is the, nothing is uh, uh, pushing from the lower part of the body, wherever it is, pushing the blood into the vein. Blood automatically ascends up. But that part, because it has to ascend up in our body against gravity, the veins have got the valves. So, the blood flow in the vein is smooth, but in the artery, the blood flow will be uh, forceful. Now, that force also, as you know, the blood, uh, heart is contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing. Pushing in the blood, then it is relaxing. Then pushing in the blood, it is relaxing. So, because the blood is on and off intermittently pushed in, the flow of the blood in the artery will be wavy, up and down, up and down, up and down. But in the case of vein, it will be just passive. So, when an artery is cut, the blood will spurt out. When the vein is cut, it will just diffuse the flow. With that, it will can make out whether the vein is cut or artery. Particularly during the, if you have seen anybody cutting the um, animals for the chicken or uh, duck or anything, when they cut neck, they cut the carotid arteries are the main arteries there. And you can see the blood like a powder will spurt out like that way. Now, but the vein is cut, the blood will be just smoothing smoothly on the surface of the body. Now, then another one is, because the vein, the blood is going towards the heart, which is in our body, in the upper part of the body, the blood has to ascend up against gravity. As a result, veins have got valves. So, it will not allow the blood to prolapse back, backward movement of it. If the valves become weaker, the, uh, the blood will not be smoothly moving up, it will stagnate behind. This stagnation will stretch the veins. So, the veins will become more tortuous. That condition is known as varicose vein. Now, this is very common for the people who are in the job of long standing job, long standing job, particularly the policemen standing on the feet, or the people who are the rishamen uh, uh, cycling. And their blood vessels, because mostly calf muscles are used for the cycling, and you will say behind the knee, there's a cavity that's called popliteal fossa. Now, behind the knee, you can see the veins are tortuous veins will be there. And it will have a walk. Will it be, uh, will it give you any discomfort? It will be there. will be a tingling pain in the veins. So the best way is only, so it's not very uh, fatal. You can cut and um, a plastic scissor, you can join it together. But this varicose veins, this is called varicose veins. The varicose veins is inefficiency of the vein. The vein, the blood has to ascend up against gravity. So it's provided with the valve. When the valve prevents the backward flow of the blood and this valve becomes weak, the blood will not be able to ascend up easily. So it stagnates down. As a result, the veins will become tortuous. This condition known as varicosis. That is a defect in the case of vein. But what is about this capillary in between? Now the capillary, so the, that's a blood vessel. It's got a single layer of cell. That's all. Only one row of cell. One row of cell. No muscularis. If it has got the thing, there will be a thin covering, very smooth covering, and only a few muscle fiber. There is no layer, a smooth muscle fibers will be there. So the capillaries are the thin. Why are water the bigger and the thin? Normally, even the muscle fiber won't be there. Only a layer of epithelium. Uh, even as, you know, the capillaries will be surrounded by a single layer of epithelium only. Now, a thin single layer of cell. You saw this in the alveoli. The alveolar is lined by a single layer of cell and diagrammatically I am showing so big but the capillary is the thinner blood vessel of these two so it will be very small. Structurally it is wrong. I should not show you such a big wrong. It should be smaller than both the circle. So these are the capillaries. Capillaries have got only one row of cell. So because it has got only one row of cell, anything from outside, see there is a liquid outside. Anything from outside can go in, it can come out. That is called diffusion. Diffusion of organic molecules or digested food or diffusion of gases. So what will be the, from the blood? Now, where what will be here surrounding that? Suppose the capillary is near the cell. The capillary is in between the cell. You have got the cell here. Yeah, the cell or oh, cell here. There's a cell wall, cell, cytoplasm, nucleus, nucleus. There's a cell over there. This is a cell. This is a cell. This is capillary. Capillary. Capillary has got a single layer of epithelium and what's passing by blood is inside. The blood can be 
oxygenated or deoxygenated it can have more CO2 or CO2 the blood can have more um, food matter or less food matter or it can have a more excretory matter so anything the blood composition whatever the blood carries is there in the blood so in the case of cell the cell cytoplasm so if the cell wants food matter the cell needs glucose so the glucose can diffuse from the uh, blood and it can come to the pass through the cell membrane and come in and the same thing if there are a lot of excretory matter there are nitrogenous based proteins urea uric acid urea or the excess of co2 even o2 now this excretory matter can diffuse through that what we get here the capillary has got a single layer of epithelium as a result anything from the blood which the capillary carries can be exchanged with the surrounding cells okay now the so the capillary from the artery ends in an organ and the capillary is from the organ joins and forms a vein it's a single tube only flow of blood is different now the upper part it is the flow is down here the flow is outward so these capillaries are formed the vein are called venule the capillaries of the artery are called arteriole so arteriole and venules are the two capillaries in a sense artery ends in a arteriole and the arteriole continues down there is no break between the artery and arteriole they are continuous see the arteriole the blood is coming down and it is going up so this is arteriole this is venule venule forms a vein arteriole ends end of that so where the artery ends the range begins so every organ this is a normal blood supply now in some cases we saw already in the liver what will happen the blood vessel will not enter into the organ and divide into capillary it divide already outside the organ so the entire blood will be poured into the organ the cells will be placed in the blood so directly it can from the blood it will absorb not from the capillary and similarly the tiny tubes will join outside the organ and form the vein so this kind of circulation only we saw that as a portal circulation in your body there are three places there is portal circulation one is liver and kidney and hypothalamus the hypothalamic portal circulation and uh, uh, next one is uh, hypophysial hypophysial is a pituitary gland where the beginning of the pituitary gland the base of the hypothalamus where the pituitary gland starts hypophysial portal circulation and another one is the uh, renal portal circulation and the liver hepatic portal circulation uh, circulation so these are the three major this is a difference between the circulation through the capillary and circulation without the capillary okay now this is about the uh, now let's come to the thing the blood blood vessel which supplies the heart is only in the coronary artery and the coronary artery if the it's a smaller than other arteries smaller than aorta but the maximum work is done by the muscle, uh, heart is the heart the heart muscle does not contract the whole working cannot be done so the muscle has to be supplied with enough energy through via blood so if the and oxygen is necessary you know that produce if there is deficit of energy or food matter or oxygen is supplied to the heart muscle the efficiency of the contraction the heart will slow down it cannot contract fast and push it up so heart beat will be slow the entire blood coming out of the heart is slow means the entire body will suffer every system has to be supplied they depend on the heart only for receiving the pumping station like a major pumping water works like that from there the bright lines are coming to the uh, house so now the sub if the oxygen supply is lesser the muscle will begin to degenerate or it will suffer that can the lack of oxygen to supply to the muscle of the heart is known as the angina it gives you a severe pain chest pain and the referred pain you call it a referred pain can be seen on the right arm fully lingering pain on the right arm and right side the shoulder now so in the coronary artery diseases are how, why does it become narrow the coronary artery so coronary artery artery supplies the heart now this artery becomes narrow or the artery won't shrink now the girth of the artery will become that is it will be blocked say for example the artery is there now this is a tube the lumen is a lumen now if i deposit something inside the gap inside will become narrow so you should not think the atrophy atrophy or degeneration of the artery won't be there the narrowing of the lumen when the space becomes less the amount of blood flowing will be less 
that's what you mean by um, coronary artery diseases can there are two kinds arteriosclerosis arteries as a whole arteriosclerosis sclerosis and atherosclerosis atherosclerosis now this is mainly arterial atherosclerosis arteriosclerosis is a deposition of fat this is a deposition of calcium this is a deposition of fat or lipid or cholesterol now what will happen is the blood vessel the tube is like this it's a capillary purely diagrammatic now the capillary is there and the excess of fat get deposited here now it will get deposited and in small uh, thickened area called plug on the plug the blood cells the dead platelets will accumulate and it will form a block a little bit bigger so when this block increases both the sides what will happen the space inside become narrow now same manner that is formation of the plug plug this is called pl a q d plug you call that this where the dead platelets uh, platelets normally accumulate make the thickened area little bit bigger so when the thickened area on both the sides become thicker the gap becomes narrow the blood the amount of blood flowing also will become narrow uh, lesser in atherosclerosis deposition of calcium also can cause this thickening so there are through the lumen of the artery can decrease with the deposition of fat or calcium and what will happen the wall of the capillary will become more brittle because of the thickness and the wall the elasticity of the capillaries will be lost and it will become more brittle now this is about the uh, disease condition but normally the arteries there are hormones which are called vaso that is they are vaso constrictor and vaso dilator there are hormones will make the artery shrink and dilate when the artery shrinks the flow will be lesser and the artery dilates flow will be there this is an automatic feedback mechanism done by the hormone you will see about this in the case of kidney regulation of the water supply blood supply the filtration that is in certain cases organ if the vaso say for example now secretin is a vaso constrictor vaso constrictor is a hormone secret is hormone secreted by the uh, wall of the stomach now secretin and this secretin will uh, affect on the blood vessel on the blood vessel the capillaries will become narrow the blood vessel is narrow that is vaso constrictor that's what at the same time there are vaso dilators it can increase the uh, size of the why the artery artery size should increase or decrease is a feedback mechanism suppose lot of blood is flowing into an organ the organ is not able to accumulation is there it's not sending it out so in that case the blood supply to the heart has to be checked then only the the blood within the organ could be utilized and it or the organ is able to push out the one which is coming in so this is actually the feedback mechanism we will learn so vaso constrictor vaso dilator is different cad is different cad is a coronary artery only the coronary artery now vaso constrictor vaso constrictor and vaso dilator constrictor and vaso mean general blood blood vessel vaso dilators now these are dilators are mostly hormones which will decrease or increase the size of the arteries to regulate the amount of the blood which is flowing into the organ particularly it acts as a feedback mechanism checking the uh, proper function the rhythm of the functioning of the organ but this is a defective disorder sir, structure when the blood this will lead to your uh, angina or infarction infarction of the heart heart muscles will be refusing to pump contract because there is no energy now this is about the coronary artery so though we don't show the coronary artery in the diagram you should know the base of aorta coronary now let's see what are the patients to be guarded in this part what we have seen we have seen only the blood vessels now blood vessels connected to the heart are this what will they give you they give a diagram and you know very well arch of aorta three branches on the uh, left side of your body has got separate branch then on the left side left subclavian left common left is head and neck on the right side is a common branch one branch the uh, right arm and then another branch is the right side of the head and neck that much you, if you don't know remember the name it's okay on the left side of your body get separate blood supply left arm has got a separate blood supply left part of your head and neck is separate blood supply and the right side you have a com
or chambers so you can make out the diagram what are the various things particularly the artery vein and capillary they give you they just give you the diagram alone and find out now what is which is capillary vein and the artery so the question and match the following completely match the following can be the statement questions can be there as as well as the labeling diagram questions can be that diary questions can be there all right the valves which are uh, uh, controlling the i mean guarding the path from the upper and lower chamber are cuspid valves by cuspid and tricuspid the valves which are regulating the flow of blood in and out of the heart is semilunar valve so the valves they can you have to read the statement how the wording is there general wording of valves going out and valves which control the blood flow outside and the blood flow within the heart so the the, the, the different multivariate ways in this uh, Uh, blood this is a um, uh, in the diagram what we are seeing the question can be and what the, uh, the what is the blood particularly the uh, blood supply to the heart muscle is done by what coronary artery where does it start from and what are the defects connected to that can coronary artery diseases coronary art arteriosclerosis or arteriosclerosis one is by deposition of calcium and arteriosclerosis by calcium and the arteriosclerosis by the uta i told you arteriosclerosis by the fat and arteriosclerosis by calcium and calcium deposition in the inner wall of it now uh, deposition on the deposition the plug or the dead platelets will deposit and the plug will be increased and these are the things related to this so now you saw the structure and function now we have to see the working of the heart that is only mean by cardiac cycle now cardiac cycle is now the heart do it at the upper and lower chamber now these two upper chambers work together that both the auricles works together and both the ventricles work together but the auricular and ventricular are contradictory there is an auricular relaxation let it right and left auricle works together first point you should know um, it i should not use the word auricle atrium on the first point you should know atria atria is plural atrium is singular atria work together right and left work together similarly ventricles work together work together but both are contradictory that is contraction is called systole and the systole is contraction systole and diastole opposite is the diastole diastole is the relaxation so when the atria contracts ventricle will be relaxed when the ventricle contracts atria will be relaxed so the upper two these two chambers are connected through the valve they are connected through the opening guarded by the connected connected these chambers ventricle sorry by opening opg means opening guarded by cuspid valves 
guarded by uh, generally cuspid valve, cuspid, bicuspid and tricuspid valve. Cuspid valve and these valves are attached to the very important one of the caudate tendon. Caudate tendon. Caudate tendon, tendon is plural. Caudate tendon is the fiber connecting the bicuspid valve to papillary muscle. Papillary muscles are on the inner side of the ventricle. Papillary muscles. So these are the basic features you should know. First, you take the artery. The wheels are the diagram. Atrium and ventricle. These are the ventricle. Atrial wall. Pumps and larges. Papillary muscle. Main are all the uneven and folded. Okay. Now this is Uh, yeah, the, this is, you know, very well. The left and this is right side. This is the left side, you have got bicuspid valve. Right side, tricuspid valve. We need only the valves and the thread. Cardi tendon. It's attached down to this fiber muscle, okay? Now, the blood, with the first we'll see, when the both are, that is, it is in a contracted state, this will be relaxed. When the ventricles are contracting, our area will be relaxed. For the area. In the beginning of the thing, the, 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 to begin with, let us take this a covering. This is a pericardial membrane. Going this, this pericardial membrane, the whole heart is covered by the thin membrane. That's a pericardial membrane. Now, when the atria contracts, the first let us take. Now, what are the blood vessel? On the left side, you have got the pulmonary, uh, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, pulmonary veins, pulmonary veins here. Yeah. And from here is the uh, arch of iota. Iota leaves the heart, leaves the heart around, and then the pulmonary vein, the pulmonary artery goes up and divides into two. So, inferior vena cava, superior vena cava, completely superior vena cava. Now, pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery. Artery goes out. Now this is pulmonary artery. Divides into two. Mm. Pulmonary artery. Now you got this is on the left side business. The blood vessel which is now draining in to the upper chamber. That is the right part of your heart. Right side of the heart carries into your blood. From the auricle that from here the blood flows here. From there it goes to the uh, ventricle. From the ventricle goes to the pulmonary artery. That's the reversal back. Now this is the direction of the flow of the blood into the heart on the uh, right side. And on the left side, the flow of blood into the left side is uh, let's see. Let the left side what happened? Now the pulmonary vein brings the blood inside the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein. There are two pairs of pulmonary vein, not only two, and it comes into the heart and via to the, uh, the uh, atrium. From the atrium it comes to the ventricle. From the ventricle via the aortic arch, it goes out. The blood is moving out through the aortic arch. Now, similarly, here also the blood is going out through the aortic arch. Aortic arch is on top. Pulmonary vein will be where pulmonary artery will be below. So, the opening of these blood vessels are very important. Guarded. This is guarded by semilunar valve. Here also semilunar valve. Here also you got semilunar valve. Here also semilunar valve. Now, the, the, this is the cuspid valve. Cuspid valve is in the wall of the heart. Semilunar is wall of the, uh, the mouth of the uh, blood vessels. All right. Now, how is the flow of blood? The flow of blood is the from the upper part of the body, all the deoxygenated blood is carried by superior vena cava. Now, superior vena cava, SVC, 
Now this is SVC, superior vena cava, a lower part of the part IBC, inferior vena cava, pours into the right atrium. From the right atrium, the blood comes to the left, uh, right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it goes to the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery, all the arteries normally carry oxygenated blood, exception is pulmonary artery, which carries the deoxygenated blood. Where the pulmonary artery goes, the pulmonary artery goes to the lungs for purification. Now, similarly, the flow on the right, left side is the blood vessel, that is mainly the blood vessel which uh, carries the oxygenated blood from the lung, pulmonary vein. This is the pulmonary, pulmonary vein. Veins will bring the blood. So, this is the iota, iota, arch of iota takes it out. Now, the contraction and the beginning state, the leather state, all the four uh, chambers are in a relaxed or expanded state. The relaxation is called diastole. First is a joint diastole. Joint diastole. Joint diastole. Uh, joint diastole means both the upper and lower chambers are in the relaxed state. So automatically, the blood is flowing with the upper chambers on the left and right side, pure and impure blood or oxygenated, deoxygenated blood. And automatically, because the valves are open, so the blood, what happens the joint diastole? Uh, inflow of the blood. Uh, inflow means what? The blood inflow of the blood. Inflow of blood of blood both on the left and right side. On left and right side. That's the first or second point. Next one, the, the cuspid valves are open. The cuspid valves are open. Are open. So now uh, the both the thing in a joint to that relaxed state. And but the semilunar valves are closed. So cuspid valves are open, semilunar valves are closed. Semilunar closed. Now you should know this point because these are the points where they can orient your neat question. So joint diastole, what happens? Now these are the major four points. They can ulta the entire thing. They can give the contradiction of it. And they can ask you because one of the statements, they can say one of the statements, see there are four statements connected with that. They can write all the four in order which are the correct statements, all the four. And one of the statements, they can particularly valve. Cuspid valve is open, semilunar valve is closed. Where are the semilunar valves? Semilunar valves are the artery, not the semilunar valves are the vein. Semilunar valves are the vein is open, the blood cannot flow inside. So there also a click will be there. Generally, if they give you semilunar valves are closed, you should not take it as a correct answer. It's a wrong statement. Semilunar valve of pulmonary and uh, iota. Uh, it is nothing but juggling of the words. You have to read the question properly. See, there are four points related to the joint diastole. Joint uh, expansion. What are the four points? Both the chambers are in a relaxed state. That's the first point. Second, the opening between them are open. The cuspid valves are not closed to open. Second point. And because in a relaxed state, blood flow on both the sides, on the left side impure, on the right side. Even there also they can muddle up. And the left side and right side, the different pool, the oxygenated, deoxygenated blood flows in. Cuspid valves are open. Semilunar valves are, last statement I'll give you, semilunar valves are closed. If I just give semilunar valves are closed, that is not a correct thing because he has to mention semilunar valves are the artery, pulmonary artery and aortic arch is closed. But the semilunar valves are the vena cava veins are not closed. So it, you have to be very careful when you attend. So in this one point itself, the main points connected with that is this is about the joint diastole. And this joint diastole remains a, for a fraction of 0 0.1 second. That's all. Uh, the, whole, the 0 0.1 second it will last. In then the blood is flowing and passively it is dripping down. On the right side, uh, the impure, on the left side, impure, uh, pure blood from the upper chamber to the lower chamber, uh, left ventricle. On the right side, uh, from the to, from upper chamber to the right vent, right article, uh, ventricle. And the ventricle gets slowly filled up. It's like pouring water into a tumbler, like a uh, glass. That is the water will touch the base and then slowly it will increase. Similarly, the blood flows to the lower part and gradually it fill, gets in, getting filled up. When it gets filled up, it will come to half of the ventricle. The, the In the uh, right atrium, you know where you are on the wall, you have got a SA node. The SA node sends out the stimulus, it begins to contract. Now, when the SA node begins to contract, it is stimulated. The pot action potential is set in. That's a stimulator or action potential or polarized, it's all the same. 
So the when uh, this is only point zero point one second, then when it becomes zero point one five, now the the the, uh, the SA node begins to send the uh, stimuli. When the uh, the SA node SA node is polarized or stimulated, now the auricular muscle that is the right atrium atrial muscle begins to contract. The contraction starts in the SA node. Here, very important part of the SA node. SA node is a pacemaker. It starts the send, starting the stimuli there, or depolarization starts from there. Polarized means normal at rest. Depolarized stimulator. Repolarized coming back the relaxed state. Polarized, depolarized, repolarized. Polarized if it comes is a normal state. At the passive state. Where the blood flows uh, from top to down, the upper chamber to the lower chamber, passively filling up. The blood is draining inside and it is flowing from up and down, and the ventricle gets filled up half of the ventricle. When the lower part of the ventricle gets half filled, now the SA node begins to send the vibration, and the stimuli spreads throughout them. So when the contraction spreads throughout, what will happen? The atrial, that is the right atrium, contracts faster. So when the contraction occurs, whatever blood that it has received. It will be forcefully to push down. About thirty percent of the blood will be pushed down, pushed to down totally. Now, electrocardiogram. If you see, electrocardiogram is the graphic representation of the electrical activity of the muscle of the heart. That is recorded in a graph in another ECG. Now, in the ECG curve, we have a point P, Q, R, S. The P represents the stimulation is set in the SA node and the sudden contraction of the atrium. Till then, it is passive. The blood is just dripping down. Suddenly, upper chamber begins to contract. The entire blood will be pushed down to the lower chamber. Now, that contraction, the maximum uh, pushing of 30 percent of the blood will be pushed out there, and it won't remain in that state itself. That will last for another 0.5 second. In the meantime, what will happen? The ventricle is already filling up, filling up three four. The blood has come in. Now, once the ventricle, uh, as the ventricle moves up and up and up, now the flap, the bicuspid flaps flap are the floating on the blood. So once the ventricle blood rises up, the bicuspid valve will closely face each other. Now this is the end of diastole. The ventricle has got a in a still in a diastole state, the, the expanded state. This has already begun the contraction upper chamber. The blood has forced completely come in, and the lower chamber is getting filled up. And once it comes the filled up, the valves are also raising up in the liquid, both the sides. Then what will happen? In the meantime, when it is getting filled up. The stimuli from here, they are working together. Okay, that these are the points which you should know. Uh, we can again ask the question in this: the working of the heart. Yes, uh, the two the two changes are diastole contraction and expansion. Diastole, systole, and diastole. Then mainly the systole and diastole contraction and relaxation alternating. Upper two chambers work together, lower two chambers work together, but they work contradictory to each other, alternating. When upper one is that is another one. Now then another one is the cardiac and the nae attach the valves. Are, the valves are regulating the flow, and the movement of the valve is controlled, particularly in the cuspid valve is controlled by the cardiac and the nae. Now these points you should not forget. Now the nae. Now let's come over here. So now SA node is stimulated. Now first. Atrial contraction, first part the diastole. Then the last minute, what will happen? Second point is atrial. This is first time. Joint diastole, and the end of the joint diastole. Joint diastole will last for about zero point eight na, na zero point one second. And 0.15, the sudden contact, the P wave, and the the 30 percent of the blood is pushed down. In the meantime, the ventricle is filling up. Now the second one is ventricular contraction. Now when also or SA node stimulation, SA node stimulator, stimulator. You call that as a uh, stimulator or atrial atrial depolarization. Depolarization means atria begin to contract. So the contraction of the heart, of the heart like this. Now this is a SA node. Now this I explained to you yesterday, if you remember. Now there is AV node and SA node and the bundle of his. Now the here is here. This is the AV node. This is oh, suppose like this. See here. <laughs> Yeah. 
Purely diagrammatic. Hmm. SA node, AB node. This is SA node. This is AB node. From the, 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 the AB node, a uh, line comes annular pair. Bundle has divides into two and spreads as the perpendicular fiber. So the stimuli has to spread through that to bring about the contraction. Now, and I have to show you the transverse septum because the connection is in the transverse septal area. Now this is called this area is in this part which is called the annular pad. Now this is this is interventricular septum. The bundle of is on the interventricular septum. Okay, and these are Purkinje fibers. So when the SA node is stimulated, the atrium begins to contract. So finally, atrium complete the blood both the atria contract and the stimuli be slowly spreading out the entire part of the atria. Practically, right atrium will a fraction of a second will contract before the uh, uh, left atrium. Now then the stimuli passes to AV node. This is SA. Now AV node. Now, in the meantime, the stimuli comes to AV node through this connecting link, the connecting link and then the bundle of this. So, the time taken for the stimuli to move from here, suppose you take the cardiac uh, cardiogram, you will have the P, P wave, then Q, R, S. P, Q, R, S. Now, that is the P is the last contraction. Q is the sudden flow, that is contraction of the last contraction. Now, the, the spread of the stimuli from the SA node to the AV node is the QRS, QR. The time drawn taken for the Q, the wave from this segment represents the time taken for the, uh, the stimuli to pass from SA to AV and bundle of this. So after that, what will happen? When the contraction, the in the meantime, when the stimuli is being passed like this, the ventricle is getting filled up. So once the ventricle is fully filled up, it begins to contract. So when the ventricle begins to contract, now, area will, atria will begin to relax. So, when the atrial relaxation, the atrial contraction is a very short span. That is only this much. Contraction and that much. Then the spreading goes. So, it's a fraction of 1, 0 0.1, uh, 1, 0.15 second little will have the contraction. So, if you take a graph, this will be uh, 1 means 1.52. 1, 2, uh, 2, just opposite to 2. That is in between the first second and second second, the contraction lasts for a short span of time, the atrial ventricle. That is represented in the segment QR. QR, the PQ represents the contraction of the atrial or depolarization of SA node. Now, QR represents the time taken for the stimuli to pass from SA to AV to bundle of his. In the meantime, what will happen? The atrial contraction, the contraction of the atrium is from, say, we can say it starts from Q, QR. QR is very short, short segment and it takes a fraction of a second, point, um, uh, one five, point 0.15, five second only today. Half of a point, okay? Now, less than one second. Now, one tenth of a second, that is again another half of that. One and a half uh, second. Also, this short span of QR shows that conduction. Why am I telling you? They will give the grasp. And ask you a PQ segment, PQR segment, RS segment. You know very well, we will see the electrocardiogram along that side by side. If you see, it will be easier for you. So now, okay, now the ATL depolarization. We will finish the cycle. So, when the ATL, the uh, ventricle gets full, the ventricle begins to contract. But the atrial contraction will start from top to down. But ventricular contraction will start from base to up. The ventricle begins to shrink from the lower part and gradually it moves up. The atrium begins from top and it comes down. So they're pushing the blood down, down. Now when the ventricle begins to contract, now the blood will, the valves are sending all of these valves are closed and valves are closed here. So the blood will begin to rush backward because of this cuspid valves. But when the cuspid valves cannot go backward, then the cardiac tendon will pull them down. When the cardiac tendon pulls them, pull them down, the, the valves which are regurgitating well, they touch one another, the great force that produces the first heart sound, that is the love sound. It's a uh, it's a sharp sound, short span. Uh, love and dub is a, the, you know, heartbeat has got love dub. Love is the first sound produced by closure of the cuspid valves. 
due to the contraction of the ventricle. When the ventricle contracts, the pressure increases. So, a fraction of a second, both are in a contracted state. A, uh, atria has started relaxing. Ventricle has fully contracted. It is still contracting. But by the time the ventricle begins to contract, the atrial begins to relax. It will be a slow relaxation. Now, how when the ventricles contract, the cuspid valve class closes, produces the dapsone that is the at the second of 0.2 second. 0.1 stimulation starts. In 0.2, the stimulation spreads, atrial ventricle gets filled up, and the ventricle contracts, and the closing occurs. This is that one 0.1 sec. Between the difference between 0.1 and 0. This gap happens. At 0.2, the valve uh, closes, producing the love sound. Now, once a love sound is produced, heart sound, what will happen? APA will begin to relax. Ventricle begin to relax back again. So, the blood, at that end, no, love sound, the pressure inside the ventricle pushes the semilunar valve and the blood rushes back to the outside the heart, to the pulmonary artery and aortic. So, 0 0.2 is the first heart sound. The blood enters the pulmonary artery and aortic, aortic arch and the blood is drained outside the heart. Okay? Now, that the first is joint diastole. Then a SA node stimulated, atrial depolarization, contraction of the atrium, followed by ventricle depolarization. Okay, ventricle begins to contract. When the ventricle begins to contract, first heart sound. At the beginning of the contraction of the ventricle, the beginning of the heart sound. These points are very important. Love produced at the beginning of the ventricular contraction. Now, similarly, when the beginning of the relaxation, the next second heart sound will happen. So the beginning of the ventricular contraction, what happens? The closure of the, semi, uh, the cuspid valves, which produces the first heart sound. So actually, ventricle has got more work than the atria. Atria is not, it's only pumping down because it cannot stand the pressure of the blood flowing into it. It just passes it. But the coming out of the blood out of the heart is a major job of the ventricle. How it has to push outside. So the ventricular muscle becomes weak. The, the blood going out of the heart rate or the speed will decrease. So first is joint diastole. What happens in joint diastole? Both the chambers are relaxed. Valve, cuspid valves are open. Semilunar valves of the big arteries are closed. Blood flows in the two upper chambers and passive flow of the blood into the lower chamber. Then the, the atrial diastole, joint diastole, gradually, you know, it, it lasts for about uh, one second you take, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, one second, zero four fraction of a second, 0 0.1 second. And the SA node is stimulated. That's the second point is the SA node is stimulated. Atria begins to contract. And because atria begins to contract, the, la the last amount of the blood, 30% of the blood is crushed, uh, rushed into the uh, ventricle. So the ventricle begins to be completely filled up. Then, then that will last for another uh, point, uh, for 0.15 second. That is, if I say 0 0.1 and if a graph, if I mark 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, in between the point will be done 1, 1, 5, 1, 5, 150, 175, then only it will come to this 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 125, 0 0.175, then only 0 0.2. So the second half, the middle between the 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, this is the place. Okay, so at that time, then a fraction, the ventricle contracts, the cuspid valve raises, producing the second sound. The second, no, I'm sorry, first heart sound. That is the love sound, closure of cuspid valve at the beginning of ventricular contraction. So these are the points you have to be careful. Now see, now this I want to relate it with your uh, electrocardiogram side by side. If you see, that, uh, that will make it easier for you to study. This is a root. Now, if you take a lecture cardiogram P, Q, that is the P, Q, R, yes, T, uh, the P, Q, R, yes. It will come down, up, and the T, it will be T. Now, the whole thing from here, that is, uh, from the time the P waveform, this is P. 
So this P. Now if I draw the whole thing down, now the here it is uh, opposite the in between the P and Q. This is zero point one. Exactly below the R is zero point two. Then this will be zero point three. Here zero point three. Yeah. Now this is uh, first in people. Uh, what happens there? Now this is zero point one, zero point one, this zero point two, this zero point two, this zero point three. Then yeah, what up till four, up till zero point three, then zero point four. Then uh, zero point uh, five roughly six uh, no this is zero point six it will come there is four and five here six and seven and eight so from here you should know now the the timing I'll give you back again now at present now the P represents the SNO stimulation now the P Q R the time taken for the stimulation to spread through A B to bundle of his. At the same time, what will happen? The time taken, this is a, a, the, the connected to the thing. P represents the stimulation of the SA. At the same time, the last contraction of the atria. So thirty percent of the blood is rushing into it. Now, so the beginning of the SA node, the contraction begins. So atrial contraction begins. What uh, in your graph ECG? The P wave represents the setting of depolarization of SA node and the uh, final, the, the contraction of the atria, upper atria. So the atrial contraction pushes the blood downward and 30% of the blood is pushed downward. Joint diastole is after that only. Joint diastole, they are passive. We are starting the function with the SA node stimulation. And in the graph QR, like that the PQR or QR represents the time taken for the stimuli to move the AV node as well as the bundle of case. That is stimulate. Now, what happens in the meantime? In the meantime, ventricle, that is during the Q and the R, the ventricle is getting filled up. So, the R represents, that is exactly about 0 0.2, the R represents the contraction of the beginning of the ventricular contraction. So, the ventricle begins to contract, producing the love sound. So, the love sound is produced in this area. That is closure of the R represents, so PQ represents something for you. And uh, Q, uh, P, first B. See in the graph, there are these are the points in the graph. Now the first is P represents, then Q R represents, then R represents. R. What is P? Contract SA node stimulator, auricular contraction. What is Q R? Time taken for the uh, stimulate to pass from the AV node to the bundle of his. At the same time, ventricle is completely getting filled up. QR represents the contra uh, filling up of the ventricle completely. Then um, the R, R starts, R point start, the ventricular contraction begins. Now the QR represents filling of the ventricle, filling of ventricle as well as conduction of the stimuli. So the conduction of the stimuli from AV SA node. Please learn that probably P represents the SA node stimulator. Or atria depolarized polarize, or atria begins to contract. These three points are same. And uh, the QR represents the time taken for the stimulant to move from AV node, SA node, to AV node, AV node to bundle of case. At the same time, what will happen to the ventricle? The ventricle is getting fully filled. So, uh, Now, the working we will learn along with the ECG. Joint diastole. Okay, I think it's too much. Of, okay, now it doesn't matter. You learn side by side, it's easier for you to follow to understand the graph. Otherwise, you have to repeat it back again. Hmm. So, joint diastole, what are the points you said? Then the next one is depolarized. Second stage is what? Depolarization of the uh, second is depolarization of atria or atrial contraction. Atrial contraction. 
Now in the graph, atrial contraction is shown by P. And QR, PQR or QR, QR represents the, the time taken for time to travel, time to move, the, the P represents atrial contraction or depolarization of atria, depolarization of atria, depolarization of atria or um, uh, atrial contraction, SA node is stimulated, SA node stimulated, all the three represented by P. Now, why this is, you know, the LECG is a fucka question in all the neat paper. Now, they can ask you anything. Just they will ask you segment, that is a gap between the each, that is PQRST, that's all they say. This is the P wave. What are the waves on the ECG? P wave, PQRS complex. You call that as a P, uh, PQ is a segment, QR is a segment, QRS is a full segment, ST is a segment. Now, by the time ST comes, it will be 0 0.6 second by the time. Everything is the point 0.1, lesser than 1 second only. So, the entire thing to end, it uh, com completes by 0 0.8 second. So, every heartbeat, contraction and relaxation of both the chambers finishes in within 0 0.8 second. That is one cardiac cycle, one heartbeat. So, one heartbeat takes 0 0.8 second. Now, the heartbeats uh, for a, a one minute, how many times it takes, we have to calculate. We will come to that next step. So, the entire contraction and relaxation, which you call as a cardiac cycle or a heartbeat, finishes, takes a time of 0 0.8 sec. The 0 0.8 second, how are we going to divide? How it happens? It happens because of the stimuli which is passing through the same muscle contraction. So, P represents not only atrial contraction begins, contraction at the beginning of the atrium, at the same time, depolarization of the SNO, only SA node only will be the SA node stimulator, depolarization of the atrial muscle, the stimuli spreads the starts from there. Only P. Now, when you come to the QR, time taken time to spread from spread from a, a, uh, SA to SA to A B and bundle of this and bundle of this. BH is bundle of this. The time taken for that. In the meantime, what will happen here? Ventricle get ventricle gets filled up currently. Fully. Ventricles get filled up. Filled, filled up fully. So when the wave R is complex, when the point R, the point R is the ventricular contraction. Ventricular contraction starts from the R. R onwards it begins. So at that time, ventricular contraction. Love sound, her first heartbeat. So the first heartbeat is taken at 0 0.2 sec. That is, the R represents the first heart sound. What is the time? 0 0.2. From the time the atria begins to contract. Now the last contraction, the atria full contraction is PQ. QR represents the time taken to spread. In the meantime, ventricle is getting filled up. QR represents the ventricle is getting fully filled up. At the peak of the R represents the contraction of the ventricle. You have to learn side by side, you have to consider. So, that is the time where the cuspid valve goes. So the first heart sound love is produced at the time of 0 0.2. From the time we are starting the dance as well, the contraction starts from here. That is before that, is, that is after 0 0.8. After 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 10, uh, 0 0.9 will be the next one second. So, the, the joint diastole starts from 0 0.7 to 8. And uh, eight after eight, what will happen? Zero point one, two, three. So the gap between the eight and zero point one slowly says there is again second heartbeat zero point one if I take. Now the joint diastole comes zero point one. Then between this is zero point two. This is zero point one, zero point two. What will happen? The diastole comes after that is uh, after this it comes. Now when it comes, it begins to contract back again. So it goes up like this. So diastole is. From the 0 0.6, the ventricular diastole from there, 0 0.6, 7, 8, that is to 0 0.2 second and 2 and a half second it takes. So that is diastole. That's why we started with the joint diastole. Okay. But atria begins to die, uh, relax when, when the ventricle begins to contract, atria will be relaxed. So complete relaxation is here 0 0.2. So atrial relaxation 0 0.2. 0 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 0 0.1. So the ventricular atrial diastole is longer than ventricular diastole. Practically, atrial diastole from 0 0.2 to 3 now, 1 second, then second, 3 seconds, 0, uh, 0 0.1, 2, 
ड्यूरेशन whether ventricular diastole is long uh, long or atrial diastole is long now ventricular contraction is long when auricular contraction is short auricular contraction from 1 to 1.5 time only now from 2 to till the end of the t wave ventricular contraction the end of the t wave will be 0.4 so what happens ventricle remains contracted when the ventricle remains contracted caspid valve closed Here, caspid valve closed. So, what will happen? The blood will be uh, caspid valve closed. The blood will be rushing into the uh, pulmonary uh, um, artery and the aorta and pulmonary artery. That is that between two and three. So, Q R S represents the contraction of the ventricle. Okay, from the two, the ventricular contraction starts. It goes on and it lasts after the T wave. End of the T wave, ventricular contraction stops. So when the ventricle is contracted, the blood will be automatically pushed into the aorta. So the end of this T wave, ventricle begin to relax. The ventricular relaxation starts. Okay. Now the the uh, so first is joint diastole, then S A node contraction of the ventricle. That goes on. Third one is relaxation of the ventricle. And the relaxation of the ventricle what will happen when the ventricle is relaxed? The pressure inside the ventricle falls. The blood from the artery begins to try to come back, but they cannot come back. Semilunar valve closes. Now the closure of the semilunar valve will begin. The cut valve will start. The, so the closure will begin the second sound, dub sound. Please listen. First sound is closure of bicuspid and tricuspid valve at the beginning of ventricular contraction. When does the ventricular contraction in the ECG the peak R? What's the time? Zero point two. Second, and the beginning takes only point two uh, second, one point one point five second, zero point one five second. So in the graph, R represents the first heart sound and closure of the cuspid valve. Then the at the then ventricular relaxation, the ventricular contraction lasts. It goes on till the entire blood is pushed out into the arteries. So the ventricular contraction goes on till the rate T. So when the ventricle begin to relax, cuspid valve is still closed. The blood cannot go back, and the, the blood rushes into the now ventricular relaxation starts. So already the blood is fully out; it has gone. Valve is kept closed. So that is all during ventricular contraction. See, ventricular contraction starts on RST. It's a longer duration. What happens at that time? The blood from the ventricle. Goes into the blood vessel, pushing the semilunar valve. The blood cannot revert back because the bicuspid valves are closed. So at the beginning of the ventricular contraction, three points are there. But the beginning cuspid valve closes first heart sound. Then after some time, the cuspid valve remains closed. The pressure increases. The blood rushes into the artery and moves out. The two important one: closure, beginning, and duration. Uh, in the meantime, as it gradually builds up, it goes out. Then when the ventricle begin to relax at the beginning of relaxation, now the blood will revert back. Suddenly, when the valve closes, it produces a dub sound. So the dub sound is the lag. But when the ventricle relaxes, atria will begin to contract. The blood flow it goes on repeatedly. First is joint diastole, then atrial contraction, SA node, atrium contraction, filling up of the ventricle, then ventricular relaxation. Now during the ventricular relaxation, the blood goes out. It cannot come back from the blood. Uh, the blood which is gone and the blood vessel cannot revert back. Closer to the semilunar valve, dub sound is produced. Joint diastole, atrial contraction, ventricular contraction, ventricular relaxation. Now this one repeatedly when the uh, repeatedly goes that is one main way cardiac cycle. So the cardiac cycle you will understand better if you learn that the the graph. Now, why am I insisting on your? So now, let's see what are the questions based on this. Leave apart the ECG. Now, then let's see this cardiac cycle. Okay, 
Now the cardiac cycle, time taken for cardiac cycle is how much it is. Now so the time one cardiac cycle, cardiac, this is what means the cardiac cycle. Then the atrial contraction, uh, where atrial first is joint diastole, atrial contraction. Oh. Okay, you just um, uh, go through the um, how the contraction and relaxation the atrium and atrium goes through. Next class, we will compare this with the uh, ECG. ECG is important for your needs. Every, uh, every question, there will be a diagram. If they want a question from the cardiovascular system, is not the structure of the heart, elaborate things they want to ask you. Only cardiogram. ECG is the main question oriented in the case of need point of view. We will discuss some questions regarding that. Thank you. Thank you.